70,000 mayors tomorrow would bring in $300 million of economic investment tomorrow. So these are, these are things that we should be discussing, we will be discussing, and it's just like minimum wage. Even though some of the numbers have changed from the 126 legislature to the 127, we are on the right side of history on these two issues, and we're going to keep pushing them. Let's have a referendum on that. <laughs> Any other questions? We have spoke in Ellsworth last week, and um, there was uh, tremendous energy coming from the governor. He's, he's a, a, a powerful speaker, he's a powerful, um, potent force, just in, in, in himself. He, he, all right, I, he's, he's a boy. <laughs> One of the, the aspects of uh, the presentation was that people were um, asked to write out questions for the governor and his press secretary handled those. There was no of, of the give and take that we're having today. It was really significantly absent. He did make his case that there were lots of choices, um, um, charts about to, to prove his program. One of the the strongest um, propositions and energy coming from the governor had to do with what the, the gentleman, the French gentleman, spoke about before. He is talking about bringing business to Maine and everything that uh, he's proposing in terms of lowering the income taxes and, um, and the other taxes is is headed uh, is aimed toward bringing people of wealth and position and bringing industry uh, to to Maine and he cites uh, as you all know uh, comparisons to Texas and South Carolina and other states uh, but there is a quality of I'm doing something. And I'm really going to bring big business to this state. And, and you folks are doing a beautiful job in the sense that you're talking about mayors prosper, prospering. But uh, I think you should address this matter of bringing business to Maine. Absolutely. I think, I mean, you, you hit on a point that I'm glad we're talking about, and I'm glad we're talking about how we are going to grow our economy. We talk about workforce a lot. Um, the governor is really putting all of his eggs in the basket that has failed us time and time again. He gives the examples of a few states. I've got a couple other examples, Kansas and Louisiana. They have tried to do what the governor has done, put their faith in stock and trickle-down economics, where you put most money in the pockets of those that have, have the most. What has resulted is budget cuts in education and other things that grow your economy in Kansas and Louisiana. In Kansas, they're, they're, they are closing their schools early because they don't have the money they thought they would. In Louisiana, Governor General cut higher education by 40%. These are the types of things that happen when you, when you buy the myth, the failed theory of trickle-down economics. These types of things happen. We want to make sure that we're investing in the mayors here. We want to make sure that we're investing in a workforce that attracts businesses to Maine. The way that we think we're going to do that is the same way to the, the, the local companies that I've talked about in your county and those that exist in central Maine and northern Maine, we want to make sure that we are creating an environment where our communities uh, can provide the, the things that they need to attract young families here and, 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 and new companies. So I think we have to play to our strengths. We have to, we have to know what we're good at. And what I think we're good at is making sure we tell the story about what's special about Maine. And we've heard stories over and over again about CEOs going around the country looking to relocate or, or, or open up shop in Maine. You know, one of the things that people think about um, when they think of Maine is uh, our natural resources and our schools and our communities and our low crime rate. Um, so I think it's a combination of things that are going to lead to uh, business uh, coming to Maine and growing those businesses here in Maine. 
Before I stop talking on this question, I want to thank you and appreciate you highlighting something that was highlighted on the talk show call on the other day, and a real back and forth. This is what we wanted. We didn't want to come up and give a presentation and screen the questions. We wanted to take the risk of opening this up and having a true public dialogue. you don't have to ask questions. It's tough to be up here answering questions, but I really appreciate you guys being here tonight so that we can have this whole public, whole public debate. And, and I think, uh, you bring up just, I think, you know, there's, there's a lot to think about in, the, in this budget uh, negotiations, and there's a lot to think about with the governor's plan and our plan. But I, I just would answer your question like this. If we truly want to make Maine more competitive, and if that's what this is about, the governor's plan, then let's take that $300 million that he, want, that he wants to give to the top 10%, and let's start investing in our workforce. Let's start investing in our our economy and make us more attractive to outside business investors. Let's do that. If that's because if that's the question, I'm sure we all have some good ideas on how we can grow and our economy, make ourselves more competitive, make ourselves more attractive to outside businesses. And it wouldn't be giving $300 million to the top 10% of Maine people. It'd be making investments. And that's what, that is what's lacking, in my opinion, left and right in the governor's plans, is he's making very few investments, and he has made very few investments in our state over the past five years. And that has to stop. I mean, we're not going to remain competitive if we have bad roads, if we have you know, slow broadband, if we have community colleges just fighting for $6 million, that's not, that's not gonna make us an attractive place. And so, I, again, if we wanna make ourselves more attractive, more competitive, let's have that discussion. But I don't think it'd be doing what the governor's doing about really, really focusing almost all of his energy around income taxes, and then when you unpack it, really it's getting the rich to be richer in the state of Maine. Of course. I Dennis Marvel, and of course I don't have a question, I have a couple of comments. And I, and I have to say the first thing I thought of when the gentleman referred to the government and the governor of Green Business here was K Street in Millinocket, nay, yeah. at the Bucks yeah. Court. So I'm sorry, but that's what I associate with the governor of Green Business here. You've alluded to Bangor and how it's worked. And you've talked about coming out and promoting something, and that's, that's what I want to commend you for and ask you to continue to do. The content, the policy matters. But taking a lead on a conversation right now matters more. What I've heard for the last six or seven years, starting nationally all the way down to the state, to the local level, is, is a conversation grabbed by extremists on the far right that is based on fear-based anger and the idea that if you keep lying enough times in a row, somehow it becomes the truth. And we haven't had we haven't had a jump on that. We, we've all sort of been pissed off in our own ways and lobbied for individual bills and talked to each other, but we haven't gotten together and said, there's a way we can do better together for this, just like Bangor did. Bangor business leaders took some economic risks about the cross center and everything else. We've worked in partnership privately with government, and we believe that the people of this town deserve that. When Sean was head of health and community services, Bangor was with Portland, one of the two communities in the state doing the right thing in terms of GA. So it can be done for everybody. It needs to be done for everybody. And we need you guys to keep championing this. Thank you. Gentlemen, thank you for coming to Bangor. My name is Don Cookson. I think one of the most important things that has been spoken here tonight is the notion that there is a need for much greater communication between residents and their lawmakers. That pressure needs to continue to see appropriate actions taken in Augusta. Uh, you talked about the importance of grassroots approaches. Uh, that's what's creating some upward pressure with regard to minimum wage uh, from the municipal level. Uh, to Augusta. It's unfortunate to see uh, the governor having introduced by Senator Cushing a bill that would quash the ability of municipalities to increase their own minimum wages. And I think that's another perfect example of this gentleman's uh, desire to consolidate control wherever he happens to be. 
If he's a municipal leader, he wants municipal control. If he's a state leader, he wants state control. And uh, those are really concerning problems right now. Uh, I also don't think we should minimize the notion that increases to the minimum wage would in fact mean an increase to income tax revenue at the state level. Uh, and perhaps uh, the approach by the Maine People's Alliance and the Maine AFL-CIO is the most powerful one that we can take. I weren't allowed to say anything down there, but I did talk to the cameraman, and he said, whoa, just a minute. He said, I want to do an interview with you. I said, I would be pleased, though. And I expressed this to him. But I see it was cut, and it weren't put out there. But I think everybody should know that you go with that budget, we're going to end up with the governor pages, you're going to end up with a $142 million deficit. So, you know, once again, I think uh, what we're trying to do is tell the full story of what we would like to do with uh, Maine's taxes, Maine's economy, and we're not trying to hide anything. Everything is an open book. We're not just sharing, you know, kind of apples and orange examples about income tax cuts and what's happening with revenue sharing. We're telling the whole story for Mainers because you deserve it. You, we as Mainers, we work together, we fight together, we, we do things together. And so that is why we came up with this plan to have a bigger conversation across the state. And I think, you know, when I think about Bangor and I think about Central Maine, I think about a prosperous future, but it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen under the governor's plan. It's going to take the best elements of our plan, some of the things that we've adopted from his, and we need to make sure that we put a budget together that is paid for, that works for the middle class, that deals with our property taxes, and make sure that we have monies for investment. We need to make sure that we keep investing in this great state because I know as a small business owner, I've heard, we heard from the gentleman here, they, people bring capital to where they think things are going strong, where education is strong, where roads are strong, where investments are happening. And right now in the governor's plan, he's just giving us one side of the equation. He's not telling us where the cuts are going to happen or his spending side. All he's talking about are the cuts and the cuts and the cuts. And we all know from states around this country what, what happens when you, you drive down and shrink government too fast. How many of you remember Tabor? How many remember Tabor twice? How many remember that? So this, I mean, ultimately, this is the governor's Tabor tale, just disguised differently. He wants to shrink government in a very big way, and it's going to happen through if, if this budget is adopted. And that's why we are going to fight with you, and you're going to work with us, I hope, every single day until we come up with a budget so that we can have a better budget, a fairer budget, a progressive budget for Maine people. Thank you.